Hi everyone, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, whatever time it is you're watching this. Saturday, November the 3rd, um, what is it now, half past 11, <clears throat> just done a review, uh, which is just uploading now. So um, that'll be with you today on a, an, another World War One kit. Um, in fact, here it is, you can see it in the background. It's the Meng Marque Whippet. Um, I think it'll look bloody brilliant alongside this in the cabinet. Um, it also comes with an option to do a German captured version, but no, I need to do it as a, as a British tank, that one. Uh, I may even go for the Soviet option, but we'll see. But it is very strange. On the front of the box, I do um, mention it in my review. On the front of the box, it says, three paint schemes provided. Yeah. If you look at the instructions, there's actually two paint schemes provided. But on the decal sheet, the decal sheet, there's four or five schemes. One is German captured, one is Russian, and neither of them are in the instructions. So... Bit of a sort of uh, miscommunication on Meng's department there. So, um, yeah, what we're going to do today, we're looking at, this is part 15 now of the uh, lovely Tacom Mark IV. And uh, here it is. And we're going to look at doing some streaking. Um, I've only ever done this once or twice before, very minimally. So I'll be learning with you. Just to recap, uh, going back to step 14, this tank has had a wash and some muddy, brown, dirty, stinking filters. What I'm going to do now is get this streaking done um, and then I need to stop and get the tracks finished. They're almost done. Um, I've just got this many to do. So if you look in the bottom of this pot, that's the little guides that go on the bottom of the track links. And every track link has one of them. So yeah, and you can see there's the actual pads. So once those are built, those few there, that's it. Finished at last so uh yeah that it may even happen later today and i might even do a special one-off video of the last track link being assembled because that has been a pain in the ass i would never do that again so anyway yeah part 15 streaking um i'm not going to try and rewrite history books or re tell you how to do this because there's a million videos on youtube that will tell you how to do it and to be honest that's where i've learned um, I've also got some of the AK and the MIG videos, which are bloody brilliant. Um, I've got these three products here. We've got the streaking grime. We've got winter streaking grime. And we've got the rust streaks. And you'll notice on here with AK, they always do it. Grey brown for winter vehicles. I mean, for dark yellow vehicles, for Christ's sake... They don't need to tell you what you can bloody use it on. It's just a, it's just an enamel paint. I mean, all this is, is an enamel paint. You can use oils for this as well. Um, I may even do that and show you. You can like put dots of yellow, magenta, pink, blue, bloody whatever colour you want on here. And then streak it and, you know, get all sorts of different effects. Um, but now these companies have come along with these products that are, you know, that is streaking grime that can only be used on dark yellow. Um, and you have to use it in a certain way and there's no other product like it. No, you can make all this yourself. Not, I, I don't think you'd be very successful with acrylics. Um, somebody's going to prove me wrong, but I don't think you can streak with acrylics. I've, I've got a video which I need to watch actually. It's a very old video, I think it's AK. And it's a non-stop 60 minute video on painting and weathering an armoured car. So uh, yeah, I need to watch that. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so we've got the three colours. I'll try and use all three. And I'm not really too bothered what happens because at the end of the day, being a nominal product, I just put some thinners on it and wipe it off. But basically what I'm going to do is apply this in a streaking manner, leave it for a while and then sort of brush it out. Now these paint, these paints I've had for probably eight, seven, eight years. And this one in particular, I think has had it. Um, these two seem absolutely fine. Uh, I would advise anyone that uses paint which is basically every modeler on the planet get one of these they're absolutely brilliant um they get right into the bottom the only trouble is with these bottles because of the shape on the bottle you don't get right into this area here but you know you can give them a really good shake and and you need to keep shaking them while you use them anyway because they do tend to settle down particularly the filters do that so let's start with the um the rust streaks so give it a quick shake um and you can see when you look in here it is literally just a brown enamel paint. That's, that's all it is. It's just a brown enamel paint. So what I'm going to do is 
Da, da, da. Here's the first. I'm going to zoom you in. Let's have a look at this little turret area on the side. So what we're going to do is take some of the paint, make sure there's not too much, and then I'm just going to, from there, I'm just going to put a line, and a line, and a line, like this. And that's it. Yep, just put in some lines. Because I'm really awkward just in front of the camera and find it difficult to get them straight, but hopefully I can show you from this that it doesn't really matter. Okay, and like I say, garish over the top. Keep it that way. Always garish over the top. That's how you want it. Because it's not what you put on, it's what you take off. And remember that. It's not what you put on, it's what you take off. So there we go, so that's that one gone on. So put the lid back on that one so I don't knock it over. What I'm gonna do is just a small sample part to give you an idea of the concept. And then I'm gonna do the rest of it off camera because I'm not as professional as the likes of Phil Florey. I can't do this stuff on camera. So I've got some more here, just clean the brush off. I'm just gonna go down. And You'll notice I've done the rust sort of from a feature. It doesn't have to go from a feature. You can also go up if you want to. And there we go. It's starting like a zebra, isn't it? A multicoloured zebra. <laughs> or a zebra in England, isn't it? I grew up in America, so I still tend to say Z. There we go. So that's that one on there. That's hardly going to show up. But, you know, that's because it's only meant for winter vehicles <gasps> now let's try that other one quickly i think it's had it this one um if i show you inside the top of the pot you can see that this um you can see on here that it's all uh, and this is all quite hard i guess that's given me a dispensing tray it's developed its own dispensing tray well so yeah i can use that to put the brush on there and get some out So AK will be doing that now. They'll be marketing their streaking grime with self-developing dispensing tray. So you can see this is a darker brown colour. It looks like it is alright actually. So just put some streaks. Now I've really overdone this area. I'm going to go up here and do some as well. It's really difficult to do this vertically down on camera. And that'll look quite good because it's quite heavy there, quite heavy there as well. Let's try that. Like I say, you're watching me, you're watching me learn. Yeah, I think this has lost a lot of its pigment. It just seems to be a bit like thinner, really. It's almost like a wash. In fact, it could come in handy to use as a brown wash. I'll just do some here over the, over the decal so you can see what it looks like. And you must also remember, in my opinion, in between all these stages, leave them a couple of days if you can. Because obviously, now this is an oil-based product. I'm going to, what they call, stump it on the, um, on the AK videos. I'm going to stump it with, a, with um, thinners. If I then come along and do another thinner thing, it's another operation with thinners, it's just going to take it all off. So you need to let it sort of settle down and bite. So there we go, I'm going to leave that for a few minutes now, and then I'll come back with it. In fact, no I won't, let's try it straight away. Um, I'm going to put a tiny bit of... Literally, this brush is just going to be damp, it's not going to be wet at all. And then I'm just going to... Brush this downwards. And this is where you do need to be vertical, because you don't... You don't want streaks appearing going diagonally across your tank do you i want to get make sure i get in there and you can see it almost disappears but it builds up around the rivets and stuff you can see now here the brush has got hardly any thinners on it at all now yeah it needs more so it does it doesn't work dry it needs to be just damp Uh, 
That's how you see it done on the um, AK videos. They just flick it up and down like this. Sorry, my hand's in the way. So as that dries, we should see it start to kind of disappear. I'm just damping the brush again. Let's get this gun out of the way. Yeah, if I don't have my hand in the way, it's quite difficult to go vertical. <laughs> I don't know how some of these guys do it, so make, make some of these videos. But I think you get the idea there, just sort of dragging it down, pulling it down. And we're getting that streaking effect from it. And there we go. This, remember, this should be, again, like I say, it's what you take off. It should be very, very subtle. You know, after, you know, great thick brown lines running all down the side of your tank, you just want, you just want to give it the appearance of, um, of some streaking. You know, it's just grime and rust and God knows what. I've also got another one here, which is called Rain Marks, which is a similar thing. So we'll try that one as well. But yeah, you get the idea. So um, I'll do this now off camera and uh, I'll come back when it's all done. Okay, so um, I've done this area here now and you can see it's starting to dry off and you can see it's extremely subtle. If you if you look, if you look here, you, you, where I started, you, you, can, it's, you can only just see it there. It's, it's, it's very subtle. Again, I keep saying it, it's, it's all about how much you take off. I've dug this um, rain marks one out. You can see this is a much lighter color. And once again, it says on here, rain marks for NATO tanks. So, you know, woe betide you if you use this or anything else, because it's only for NATO tanks, which are brown, green, and very dark gray. Mm. This is brown, sort of yellowy green, and very dark gray. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. Let's try it. Maybe it'll be okay. So, just going to put some on here. Uh, let's take some off the brush. I don't want this to be too wild. We'll see how this looks once it's done. I think I should be using a finer brush, really. Um, let's get some more on the brush. And this, I think, is just, um, it just gives you like some, it shows you on here, it, it gives you some light streaking. But uh, I think it depends how far you go. And the other thing you can do, I've just noticed on there, you can actually have it going up because it would build up on any shelved areas. Sorry, guys, this is so difficult to do on camera. I don't think I'll bother doing this again because it's, you know, I, it, it comes to a point where you want to show you, you want to show people what you do and people want to see what you do. But if you can't do what you're doing properly because you can't show them, then it's kind of, you know, defeats the object, really. But um, I guess I need to try different camera angles. So uh, let's zoom you in. And let's see what happens if I can get, I'm trying to look at the camera. I'm trying to do this through the camera. So let's just start stumping this down. If I hold the brush right at its back end and keep my hand down, here we go. So you can see here what's happening. It's kind of taking it off and just turning it into a, the remnants of a streak. So you can kind of go slow like this and nearly remove all of it. And remember guys, because this is enamel, you've got a working time. If you used oils, you could do this and probably come back tomorrow and do it. Um, 
with these enamels you have it's you, you've got like I don't know I, I'm guessing probably half an hour I wouldn't push it too much beyond that because the trouble is once you start rubbing too hard you'll start removing everything that's underneath and I think really to, to a certain extent what you're doing here is um, I think what you're doing here is is sort of blending this in with what's underneath I'm sure this is going to be removing some of those filters and I'm sure it's pulling some of the wash out from behind those bolts. So here we go. You can see, I think we've got the hang of this now. Keep my hand out of the way. Yeah, if any of you guys have ever tried this, doing these videos, or even just have a little play at home, get a camera, set it up and see what you, what you think of what you do. It's so, so difficult, especially with the smaller stuff like soldering or showing someone how to use PE. It's, uh, yeah, it's extremely difficult. And there's a dog barking outside, so no doubt Jess is gonna start now. So there you can see it. Let's keep this bend shot. And just go in downwards like that. Like I say, if you don't like it, you can remove it completely. If you don't like I don't want that one there. There we go, gone. So, these down here I'm going to work up. Yeah, it's a lot more difficult to work up and keep you seeing what I'm doing than it is to work down. So, I'll do some more of this now off camera and then uh, I'll be back. I just want to show you guys something I've just discovered by accident. Um... <clears throat> This may well be done elsewhere, I don't know, but um, I've never seen this. And this is something I've just discovered, as I say, by accident. Um, if you look in this area down here, if I zoom you in. If you look here, you can see that we've got this sort of built up dirt effect above above this 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 lip here. There's, there's like a... Um, like a, a, a piece of angle there, you know, and then you can see the dirt below above it. And what I've done, if you look just below here, you can see it's still wet. And uh, I've just got some of the ordinary winter streaking grime in there. So it's like a, a gray green sort of color. And what I've discovered is if you, if you do that, it looks like a buildup of dirt in that area. And then if you keep the brush dry, if you just brush around it, up and down what it'll do is soften the edge and wipe the paint away from that edge there we go and then you can just brush down it and it becomes like a built-up area of gunk and grime I guess and sort of I don't know if you could, if you kind of got the right mix and used the right colours. I think you could almost sort of depict being um, built up grease. But uh, I, I think it looks pretty effective, especially when it dries in its mat like that one. Um, yeah, I've done a bit more back here. Uh, maybe you can see like I've done some here. And I just there we go. Brush it like that, and then brush it back down, and kind of soften the. I need a little bit of thinners because that one's dried slightly. It's just a tiny bit of thinners on the brush. And then I can... You see what I mean? You kind of get this built up. like Almost like this has had a leak or something and it's built up on that edge. And I did actually put some here as well. To try and... Um, it's very difficult to see on the grey. Oh, stupid really. I've used the grey streaking grime on grey paint. But um, yeah... But there we go. So I'm going to let this dry now and then uh, I'll show you the end result. Just experimenting some more here. I've never um, I've never done anything like this before, to be quite honest with you. Probably because I never bloody finish anything. Um, but I must admit, this whole finishing arc, I'm quite enjoying it. It's, uh, it's nice to see something come together rather than just a half-built kit put back in its box to start something else. So uh, yeah, I'm enjoying this. Um, I've taken the winter streaking grime and the streaking grime 
and laid out areas of them on the horizontal surfaces. As you can see here, you can see it's still wet by the shininess. And um, yeah, <clears throat> what I did here, if you look here, you can see this is the untreated side. This is the treated side. I took some of the streaking grime and I just daubed it on. And then when it's almost sort of dried, like just starting to go matte with a bit of um, white spirit or sorry, odorless thinners. Don't use white spirit ever. Odorless thinners. I um, just sort of stubbled it like, like so. And it's given it this kind of just dirty look rather than, you know, having it streak. Because obviously it's a horizontal surface, it wouldn't have streaks. But uh, yeah, and then obviously I can add more effects to that and, and sort of dirty it up some more. I'm not worried about this area in here at all because it's not going to be seen. If you remember, I painted it brown because it would have been a British tank before it was captured. But uh, none of it's seen. None of this in here is seen. None of that other than what you can see through these holes. None of this area here is seen, so if you're building this kit, just paint it dark grey or something, leave it. Um, so yeah, I've, uh, I'll wait for that to go off now, and then I'll show you what I do with it. As I said, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I think it will, but um, I think it's going to work. Let's see. Just a little interlude from all the uh, weathering. See, the tank is, is still here being weathered. Um, <clears throat> I'm waiting for the, the, um, the washes on the, or the uh, streaking grime on the reef section to go off. Um, in case you haven't seen it in my previous videos, here's the tracks. Five parts per track link, uh, 184 track links. So what I've done, I've made this jig. And this here is a spike. And you press down on here and out pops the track link. And you can see there's where they're built. Building these without some sort of jig would just be an absolute nightmare because all you've got is a tiny, tiny... Let me just see if I can point it out here. You've got a tiny little, two tiny little slots in there that there's the main slot it sits in, but then there's two little tiny slots for the four aft positioning. It'd be an absolute nightmare. So uh, I made up this little jig and what I do is I cut all the parts off the sprue, put them in their individual pots, all numbered up. And then this is how I use the jig. So try and get this on camera. So I know this one here goes in there. I know this one here goes in there. How do I know? Because I've done it about 160 times already. Yeah. What you have to do is just get on with something else, do another model and have this on the side and every few minutes or every quarter of an hour or so, pop one out the jig and pop another one in. I also want to talk about glue. I've been noticing, I've been feeling a bit funny lately after, after using Tammy Extra Thin because of the way it smells, it absolutely stinks, doesn't it? I'm sure we all know that. So I tried some of this stuff. Plastic Well, the MA model supplies. Decant it into a Tammy Extra Thin bottle. And you can use it exactly the same. I actually think it's better glue. Certainly on plastic card, it works a million times better than Tammy Extra Thin. Um, and it doesn't smell half as bad. You know, like when you take the top off a tiny extra and you get that waft in your face. Well, that's been sort of stinging my eyes and stuff, I guess, because I've been doing so much modelling. So I've set up a fan that sort of blows across me and it blows into my extractor unit. But um, it still doesn't do the full effect. And of course, with winter coming, it's a bit cold for having a fan on. So, yeah, this stuff is wonderful. It works really, really well. Um, it's a fantastic glue. It dries off extremely quickly. And I think from now on, it's going to be my alternative glue to from uh, Tammy Extra Thin. So I've put some on, need a bit more on there. And then just pop this in the jig like so. Push it down, grab my little piece of plastic strip and push down. And there it is. That's another track assembled in the jig, ready to be popped out later. Oh, and the other thing I do is when this one's come out, just get the glue in there, just to make sure. And there's another one done. Okay, back to this uh, roof section here. So um, you can see it started to go off now. It started to lose its shine in certain areas. I won't touch this bit here just yet, but uh, we can see this over here is starting to dry. So I've got my palette of... Um, 
odorless thinner. It's just what I'm doing. I, I'll, I'll just show you. I'll bring you bring this in shot. What I do is I just dip the brush into the thinners, and then just on here, rub it like that, so it's almost dry. And now what I'm going to start doing is not brushing it. I'm just going to start trying to manipulate it around. Let's see if I can zoom you in in that area. That's better, isn't it? I can try and do this without my hand being in the way. Um, so if I just do this sort of thing, I can... Stub it about. And just try and break down the the edges, so it looks like a sort of deposited layer of just dust, dirt, and grime, really. And that appears to be working quite well. I have noticed when I'm doing this, any of these effects, they they look a lot look a lot more pronounced. When they're wet as they dry out they become a lot more subtle so if you can get it to just a bit more garish than you'd like to see it then you'll end up with the effect you're looking for so that appears to have um worked quite well and if it hasn't if you don't like it just take it off it's all about what you take off so with it being wet and the light and everything i don't think you're going to get the idea but maybe you can just see it there there's a bit there I've missed, but a bit more thinners on the brush, just a tiny bit more. Try it off. And then just off the camera again. Why don't I zoom out so you get a better picture? Just sort of st stubbing that. It's, it's just sort of moving the paint around and taking away the hard edge, and blending the colours together, really. So if I can now concentrate on this area here, we've got the, this is the winter streaking grime and this is the streaking grime. So you can see here doing the same sort of thing, just just get it a bit up onto those pieces of angle as well. And you can see in the middle here, it's a bit, a bit too much. But if I just break it down, into there and I can kind of move it away from there let's get some more thinners I want to get that um, germ across a bit more you know take some of the dirt away from it well, that seems to work quite nicely with the brush a bit wetter and now rather than I'm sort of half stippling and half brushing there, if you understand that. And again, once it's dried off a bit, you can move it around a bit more. And that is the beauty of, beauty of working with enamels and oils and stuff. So, uh, you can always come back. That's a bit too wet to play with now, so I'm going to leave that like it is. Um, Let's move on to this area here. Yeah, something else I need to do then is clean my brush. Working at every area, just picking up the dirt from that area and placing it down here. So let's just feather this around. It's kind of almost like using pigments in a way. Which I need to get onto because I'm sure you guys want to see that too. I'll have to um, watch my videos and do some revision on that because I don't remember. I don't remember correctly how to use the pigments now. Oh, the other thing I tried, I brushed some of the um, the rust streaks onto this, onto this exhaust. And uh, then just stipple it in afterwards. So we'll see how that looks when it settles down as well. So yeah, I'm I'm trying stuff here that I've never done before. Um, and you're watching with me. So if you see me do something and you don't like it, 
tell me or if you see me do, doing something that there's another way of doing it again tell me because this is um, a lot of this is new to me as I say because I don't bloody finish anything so there we have it so I won't bore you with that anymore um, right so we can see the top there now nearly dry nearly done and um, in my opinion that's worked so if we look at the side of the tank here there it is all streaked and everything you can see around this area here you can see the lighter rain those rain marks coming through and also here um, I think as it fully dries out it's going to look even better and we can see on the top still a bit wet but you can see the general idea of me trying to get this sort of just dirt and crap just laying on it you know um, I don't want to beat this tank up and rust it and skag it and everything because from what I've gathered it wasn't very long in German hands and it was recaptured by the French um, now I haven't done the back yet so I would imagine that even within like a couple of days it would be absolutely filthy because of the rain and the mud and the god knows what now I'm not too sure about mud I've never done it um, I need to perhaps talk to someone look at some websites get some details whatever but uh, I'll, I'll need to put some mud on this for sure at least around the bottom um, last thing I'm going to show you now before we go on uh, I, I just wanted to show you this this is the side I've just done okay so that's streaked all right and this is it this is just natural with just the the um, the wash and the um, filter and you can see there what I mean now if you look at that the wash is way over the top yeah really accentuating all those bolts really really dark and this side was exactly the same and as you can see now with the streaking and the extra thinners going on it just takes it off it just backs it all down and it just becomes like a dirty filthy tank and the last thing I'm going to do now before we finish this I'm just going to show you I don't know if, how many of you use pigments but um these are the, I don't know if you can still get these. These are the old MIG pigments. I've got loads of them. This is in a set I've got called um, Rust and Smoke. So um, I'll be using the smoke for the exhaust out there. All I'm doing here, if you remember, I put some of this, um, the rust streaks on this exhaust. So it's just got this slight tackiness to it still, a slight dampness. So what you're able to do is just take some of this on a brush and dab it on. And you can see underneath it's falling off and getting onto the model. I'm not going to worry about that, but I'll show you now. As long as the model is dry, and let's face it, in reality, um, this would have, the rust probably would have fallen off onto the, onto the bottom of the model anyway, onto the, onto the bottom, of the, onto the roof of the uh, tank anyway. So yeah, I'm not touching it. And all I'll do is pick it up blow it and it's gone and it's gone anything that's still there you can just brush it in and make it part of your weathering so now that that's on there I can sort of just brush it in a bit and what you don't want to do is get it uniform you want the color underneath to show through in areas if you go and look at a rusty exhaust on a truck or something you'll see that you know once it gets really rusty and starts to flake and everything area of it's going with areas of it go almost black and I'm going to highlight if you can see those dents I've put in the manifold in the uh, silencer there. So yeah, just brushing it on a little bit on the tailpipe now. And I'm not too fussed about the end of the tailpipe because I'm going to. I'm sorry, I'm off camera again. So I'm not very good at this camera lark. Maybe I should just give up. No, I enjoy doing these YouTube videos. It's fun. I love sharing. I'm not trying to show off. I'm not trying to get any compliments. I'm not trying to big myself up. I just enjoy sharing. And um, I like showing you guys how I do stuff and the stuff I try. And I'm trying stuff live with you that I've never done before. 
I don't just want to get on her and market products. <laughs> so many people do these videos and they just, you know, they market everything. And so I'm just going to get my bigger brush. I had a big lump of that fall down there and it's just to get rid of it. You can see just brush it in and it's gone. So just go over this with this brush and there we are. So, what do you think of that then, guys? I like it. I think it looks great. Um, I guess if I didn't, I wouldn't do this, would I? So there we go. Still got to do some more work on that exhaust. It's still, I still don't think it looks realistic enough. Um, maybe I'll do that on camera now. Let's get some. This is uh, light rust, and there's another colour here standard rust so it's a bit redder this one it's a bit more of a brick color so let's just dab some of this on in, in areas let's put some on the tailpipe the other thing I, I would sometimes do with, with rust is um, yeah it looks a bit better I would use uh, Mr. Surfacer to, um, what I do is just paint Mr. Surfacer onto the manifold and then roll it in my fingers and it all sticks and gets all gunky. So, uh, yeah. There you go. So, yeah, still some more to do. I'm not happy with that. So, um, there we go. So thanks for watching guys, uh, I hope you like what you've seen, maybe you've picked something up, I'm not going to say learnt something because I'm not here to teach you, I'm here to show, show you what I do and if you get something from that then great and if you enjoy it then even better and if you stay awake, wow, well, that's a real bonus, but there we go, there's our Mark IV tank, all street, top's all dirty and uh, let that go off now before I hand it some more and I'll do the other side. And what I might do is come back and show you in part 16, I might do the other side with oils. And I'll show you how that works because um, I have done that before on aircraft and it works really, really well. And then it saves you buying any of these products. You can just go to your local hobby shop. This is what I use. This is just a box of oil colours. I've had these for bloody years. I've only ever used two colours, I think. So, um, anyway... Yeah, um, hope you like that. If you do, please subscribe. There's lots more coming. There's lots more um, available online now to watch. As, as I say, this is part 15 of this one month build. I, I gave myself the challenge of starting this on the 11th of October and having it finished by the 11th of November. Obviously, that's um, Remembrance Day. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, see you all soon. Bye.